Hi, this is Dave Murphy with Split Software, and now that we've seen a little bit about whitelisting, let's talk about targeting. Split allows tremendous flexibility in targeting user populations for rollouts and experimentation. Custom attributes are any dimension that you can identify about a user at runtime. It could be demographic information, such as age or location, or it could be some action they take, the size of their cart at checkout, or anything else you might use to target users. Custom attributes are often used in targeting rules, the if-else statements that define the criteria for putting users into the buckets that determine which treatment they see. In addition to runtime attributes, targeting rules can be based on segments of users, similar to whitelists, percentages, dependencies on other splits, or combinations of each of these. Let's dig in just a bit more on two primary targeting methods. Segments, which were introduced in the split overview video, are predefined lists used in whitelists or as part of a targeting rules. They allow you to explicitly include or exclude individuals or groups. Segments can be created manually or via the API. The custom attributes we described a moment ago are often used when the data is more temporal or fast moving, something that you identify about the user at runtime. This could be sensitive information, which is safe because the split SDK is running inside your application. As you can see, there is a great deal of flexibility for evaluating the attributes using a variety of matchers. Let's see how these methods look in the UI. We can start with fixed groups, such as QA or beta users, most often using whitelists and segments. After identifying the explicit set of users who will get a specific treatment, traffic allocation allows you to limit the exposure of a feature to a percentage of your total traffic, independent of targeting, most often to reduce risk. This can also be useful if you have complex targeting rules so you can easily increase traffic without having to constantly tune a set of underlying rules. Once you determine the percentage of users who will participate in the rollout or experiment, for more dynamic targeting, we'd use targeting rules, which allow us to use a variety of methods to get the population we want. Okay, we've moved our split into production and kept the whitelisting rules defined in staging previously. And now we want to look at how we're going to control the rollout beyond just the very explicit whitelists that we've set. One way we can do that is if we're just doing it by percentage is to change the default rule. So by default, anyone who's not in the whitelist gets 50% on or 50% off. We can maybe start with 10% on, and as we go through time, we can, we can increase that to 30% and 40% and on and on. Right now, we'll set this back to off. And another way to control that, particularly if you have high traffic, is to control the traffic allocation. So in this case, if we move this down to, say, 10%, at that point, only 10% of our total traffic is going to participate in whatever rules that follow. The other 90% are going to get the default treatment, which in this case is off. We could change that to 20%, and then over time, increase the amount of our traffic that's going to see the feature. So there's a couple of different ways that you could roll something out benefit of doing here is that it also applies to all the targeting rules that you set in between that and the default rule. Targeting rules allow you a tremendous amount of flexibility. We can use a segment that we've had previously, a different segment than the ones that we've already used, or we can get anything that we can see at runtime. For example, if I can get the location of the students, I can select my matcher, and in this case I'm going to say it's going to be in the list of uh, New York, California and Texas. So one of these three states. So for the students in these three states, I want to further have a rule that says I only want to serve them or I only want them to participate if they've been in a split that is the class search rule. So only if they've gotten the on treatment and participated in that particular uh, treatment or experiment. Uh, do I want them to participate in this particular targeting rule? And then I could set it to be a percentage and 50-50 or whatever percentage I want it to be. So we've created our subset of the population. An important note, if we're experimenting, when it comes time to measure impact of the feature, we can see exactly how effective the feature is for this precise subset. In fact, we can see the impact of the feature for each whitelist and each rule as well as the impact across all targeted populations if we wanted to. We can increase the traffic allocation, which would incre increase the number of students who participate in this rule, 
or we can change the percentages here to change who sees a particular treatment. Now let's create another rule. You can create as many rules as you want. In this case, we're going to say uh, perhaps we only want uh, students who are uh, experienced students or have been around for a while to participate in this. So we're going to say the date is on or before. Let's call it September 1st. So we don't want incoming students to participate in this particular population that we're going to measure. And in this case, we're also going to say set a percentage, but now we want 90% of these students to see the treatment and we'll be able to measure against that particular group. Now, again, as just mentioned, when we look at metrics, we can see the impact of this set of students versus the highly targeted set of students above that fall into the, that rule or after students that don't fall into either of those rules, we can see this, the impact of the students that fall into the default rule. Or you can keep it incredibly simple with no specific targeting and just roll out to an increasingly larger percentage until you get to 100%. You can go to help.split.io where you'll find more information along with links to documentation and our community. Thanks.